What if I told you that I never drink old water? And by that, I don't mean water that you flush down your toilets. I mean water from our atmosphere, our rivers, our oceans, our lakes, and even the water in your water bottles right now. And that instead, I have this bright idea to freshly manufacture brand new water from the synthesis of hydrogen and oxygen in our atmosphere so that I can get brand new water instead of using this billions of years old water. Would that make sense to you? I mean, it's not true. But think about how ridiculous that idea sounds. When there is an abundance of water available, I'd be wasting my time and energy to create so-called new water, which would only become old as soon as I used it. Now, even though that sounds absurd, that's exactly how we're treating essentially every other resource we have on Earth today. And there's proof. This is what old water looks like. By show of hands, how many of you recognize this picture? Hands, hands. All right, well, yes, this is just an animation from the movie WALL-E. When I saw this back in the fourth grade, I was kind of scared. But this uh, projection of the future today, sadly, is no longer a projection. It's actually quite an accurate depiction of the reality. Because this is what many of our cities look like today. And the reason is obvious. It's the same ridiculous concept of making freshly manufactured brand new water. Each year, manufacturers produce greater and greater amounts of manufactured goods only to produce greater and greater amounts of trash. In fact, each year we produce 1.3 billion tons of trash. That's a big number. How many of you can conceptualize that number? Well, I can't either. To me, it's just a string of digits. But luckily, Donald Trump can help us out. See, Donald Trump wants to build a wall between the US and Mexico border that will stretch all across that and be 50 meters high. Well, I have news. 1.3 billion tons of trash is enough to build an 80 meter high wall, a wall that wouldn't stretch across the US-Mexico border, but a wall that would stretch all the way from the Earth to the moon. Now, keep in mind, that's just the amount of trash we produce in a year. That's not the amount of trash we produce throughout our history. That's just one year. And this number isn't constant. As our living standards continue to increase, as our population continues to grow exponentially, this number is only set to grow. In the best case scenario, by the year 2100, we're going to be producing double that amount of trash each year. We're going to be producing a 160 meter high wall to the moon each year. Now, this is a problem. It's an, envir it's an env environmental problem. It creates health hazards. It's a financial burden. But sometimes we tend to forget the most obvious of the problems. It's a waste. Now, that seems obvious. But think about what that means. Every time we throw something in a landfill, that's a waste of raw materials that we will never be able to use again. That's a waste of energy that was used to produce those value-added products at the expense of our environment by burning fossil fuels. That's a waste of land, land that is so precious in today's world, land that could have been used to make farms to meet the growing food demands of our population. And the fact of the matter is, it's a waste we simply can't afford to make. Our population continues to grow. Our living standards continue to grow. We need more stuff. And the fact of the matter is, these resources are limited. At some point, we will run out of oil wells to drill to make our plastics. We will run out of metals to mine to make our high-tech gadgets. So what's the solution? Well, I'm sure many of you have already thought about it by now. Recycling. Instead of t extracting raw materials from the earth, using them, and trashing them, why can't we just close the loop? Take old products 
and remanufactured them into new ones. That's what I thought too. But this summer, I realized that recycling is not that perfect. See, this summer, I went back to my home in the States and I found one of my lovely solar panel lights had stopped working. And I tore it apart and I tried to make it work again. I even searched up solutions online, but I couldn't fix it. And there was no repairman for a solar panel light. So I thought, okay, well, I'll recycle it. And that's when I ran into a problem. This solar panel light didn't fit into the plastic category. It didn't fit into the glass category. It didn't even fit into the metal category. It was simply too complex. And that's the problem with a lot of the products that we have today. Your blenders, your coffee machines, your dishwashers, they're all too complex to be categorized in any one of these basket categories. They can't be recycled. And then I thought for a second, I said, what if I could recycle it? What would have happened then? And then it struck me, there's another problem with the, the way recycling, with recycling as it exists today. Because if I had been able to recycle that solar panel light, it would have been broken down into its raw materials and then remanufactured into a solar panel light or possibly something entirely different. Now that to me seems like a highly inefficient energy intensive process. Most of that solar panel light was perfectly fine. Its structure was good. It was just not working the way it was supposed to. It only needed a minor repair to be fixed. Why couldn't I have just upcycled that solar panel light into a brand new one? And the reason is that in today's business model, recycling is an afterthought. Ever since the early 1900s, companies discovered this concept of mass production. That's when our waste generation began to take off. When they discovered this concept, they realized that if they mass produce goods, they could minimize the per unit cost of production and thus obtain a higher profit. For consumers, that means today it is easier to buy a new product, it's cheaper to buy a new product than to repair an old one. And that, sang, that sounds actually pretty good. For manufacturers, they get to enjoy large profits. For consumers, we get to enjoy the state-of-the-art technology, but it comes at a hidden cost. Today, there is an overflow of manufactured goods that have reached the end of their life expectancy. There's too many plastic bags. There's too many broken solar panel lights. There's too many run-down cars, and no one knows what to do with them. Who's paying the cost of this waste management? Well, unless you're here in Saudi Arabia, it's you, the consumer who's paying for the cost through your tax dollars. But that's only a fraction of the cost. The real cost of all this waste is the land that's being lost, the raw materials that are being lost, the, the toxins, worst of all, the toxins that are released into our environment. That's the real cost. And no one's paying for that. No one is held accountable for that. Because of that today, businesses can get away with producing products that aren't recyclable or repairable, toxic products that can wreak havoc in our groundwater ecosystems. So what needs to change? We need to have the consumers take responsibility. The manufacturers start to take responsibility. Because sooner or later, there's going to be a shortage of goods, and there's going to be a wake-up call for these businesses to start producing uh, products in a sustainable manner. But that's too late. We need that to happen now. To make that happen now, I propose that we make the system start paying for the trash that's being produced. And the way we would do that is by having what I call a trash tax. I'm sure many of you have heard of a carbon tax, but probably this is the first time you're hearing about a trash tax. Basically, any product that will leave this consumer and manufacturer circle should be charged an appropriate tax ta trash tax. For example, you see those water bottles on your table right now? They only cost one real. Think about that. If I wanted to get water, it makes more sense for me to just buy a water bottle for one real than for me to bring a reusable bottle and have the hassle of carrying it around. But imagine if that water bottle costed 20 reals, the cost of all the environmental damage it produces when it's thrown away. I'd be much less likely to buy that. And if we can start doing that with every single product, we can have a truly sustainable business model. A business model where 
every single product is produced with the end in mind, that no product that will wreak havoc in, on our environment is produced in the first place. Every single product should be recyclable, repairable, or reusable. So what would this look like? Well, I showed you a diagram before. Now I'll show you exactly what I want to happen. See, right now, what we have is we extract raw materials, and it's processed through manufacturing, and then consumers use those products. And at the end of the cycle, one, it either gets thrown away in the trash, or two, it goes back to the raw material stage through recycling. I want to avoid that. I want to skip those extra steps. What we need to happen is for these uh, old products to get recycled with the m minimal rework possible. So for example, if I had a microwave that stopped working, the microwave should be designed such that it's easy for me to repair it. Because usually, if you've seen a microwave, it's about 10 kilograms. And the, pro the real part of the microwave that does the work is probably only five grams, that little filament. Now if that breaks down, it shouldn't be more expensive for me to repair it than, than to buy a brand new one. But right now it is. But if we can make microwaves designed to where it's easier for me to repair it than for me to buy a new one, then we can avoid the step of even recycling in the first place. But eventually, it's going to get a little complicated, and we need to have it to, we, to where we can recycle it. And at that point, instead of going back to the raw material stage, we need to have a pathway for the business, to the manufacturer of the microwave, to take back the microwave and remanufacture it into a new one. In this way, we can ensure that no resources ever leave this loop between the manufacturers and the consumers. And in this way, if we really implement this system, we can make sure that Wally doesn't become, the, the situation depicted in Wally doesn't become a reality in my lifetime, my grandchildren's lifetime, or ever. Thank you.